All right, how is everybody doing tonight? So I'm going to get ready for tonight's webinar, another special one. Hopefully it'll resonate out there. I'll wait for you guys to get on board. Hit your share buttons because I think uh, this one's going to get out there and a lot of people are going to have a lot to say about it. So rather than always saying how I'm waiting for uh, the delayed reaction and people to come on board, I thought uh, every webinar, maybe I'll tell a little story, <clears throat> nothing to do with the subject matter at hand, but uh, just while I'm waiting for people. So I'm in the gym the other day and I'm in a certain section of the gym and me, I'm always like a, like an Eagle. I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm looking for what I'm going to be doing next and who's occupying the equipment and stuff. So I'm in this area of the gym doing, doing my stuff. And there's a, a young girl, probably in her 20s, sitting on the leg extension machine. And by sitting, I mean she's just sitting there. It might as well have been a lounge chair. Of course, with her phone out, looking down in her lap uh, to her phone. And so I was going to use that machine next. So I keep an eye on her thinking that she's going to leave because she hasn't used the machine at all. And in the time I did eight sets, I did eight sets and she still hadn't done a single set. So I walked over to her and I said, excuse me, are you going to be much longer on this machine? And the reaction was unbelievable. It was like she, I pulled her out of a trance. Whatever she was looking at on her phone, it was like she didn't even know where she was anymore until I came over and asked her, excuse me, are you going to be long on the machine? And of course, she vacated the machine immediately. But here's someone sitting on a piece of equipment for, I would say, must have been about 15 minutes and hadn't done anything except looked at her phone. And then she went over to the lying leg curl machine and lied on the leg curl and put her phone on the floor. So while she was laying down, she could still see it. That, and that just boggled my mind. I mean, I'm unbelievable. So I'm going to tell a little story before every webinar while I wait for the numbers to get bigger. And uh, that was so the next day when I'm in there, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to pay a little more attention to people on their phones between sets or near the end. So I'm getting near the end of my workout and there's another small area in the gym and there's two guys there. One's one guy's really jacked. He's obviously all juiced up and everything. And he's on a machine preacher curl machine. And there's another gentleman just opposite him on a seated chest fly machine. And they both have their phones out and they're both staring at their phones. And the one guy, he does his machine preacher curl. He does his set. And then immediately goes back to his phone and he's still got his arms hanging over the preacher machine looking at his phone. And he spent, the, it's like he couldn't get through his set fast enough to get back to his phone. And the other guy doing the seated chest fly, he actually kept his phone in his hand during the set. So he's performing the set while holding his phone with his baby finger and thumb. And again, it's like they can't wait to get through their set, to get back to their phone. This, this addiction habit we have to uh, the technology that we carry around just boggles my mind. I don't know how people can't be free of their phone for 45 minutes to an hour. People talk about need it for emergencies and stuff. Really, I have yet to see one time where that emergency has happened. But anyway, um, that was just a short story. Just boggled my mind to watch people's... Uh, addiction to their phones in the gym not to mention how much it interferes with them concentrating on the job at hand that if they're more concentrated on their phone than they are actually working out and then they wonder why they're not getting results oh i'm following the program really you're following the program you're following your phone and you're there kind of going through the motions of your program so i mean that's just that's just a short little hop skip and jump of uh you know i thought like i said while i wait for the numbers every week i'll tell a little story uh, rather than just tell you guys that I'm always waiting for the numbers. So tonight I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, another long, i got a good webinar here, more fitness and diet industry nonsense, but it's stuff that's hiding in plain view, stuff that you know, but you don't know, stuff that you see, but you don't see. And that's what I want to get at. I want to get at the kind of stuff that goes on out there that, that you just take for granted as being factual or we accept without questioning. And we got to start questioning because the nonsense that I see, questioning the people that are actually qualified to comment versus the people who are going by anecdotal evidence and, and just moronic behavior, uh, it just boggles my mind. So tonight I'm going to talk about buzzwords, deceptions, and other treat, cheap tricks that defy logic. So, and um, that's... Uh, 
that's a mouthful. So we're going to get into that. And I'm going to start by just um, bringing it, bringing my uh, webinar into the podcast and then shrink myself. You guys let me know that you can see that. And then uh, I will be getting right to it. And uh, hopefully I can get your comments at the same time. Uh, if not, I'll hold off and, and get them as we go along. So hopefully you guys can see that and you can follow my cursor a little bit as well. I'll open that up. Uh, obviously everyone's hearing me okay and no sound problems like last time. So uh, good stuff. We're gonna we're gonna get this going because I got a lot to get through uh, that I want everybody to uh, pay attention to and understand. So we're talking about co-opting common sense in the fitness and diet industry by using buzzwords, trickery, deception, and cheap tricks that actually defy logic, but have been existed for so long that you, the consumer, just kind of tend to just. Uh, accept them and never question them. And we got to start uh, questioning everything. Tony, thanks for letting me know about the sound. Um, good. Awesome. So uh, I got a lot of uh, pictures I want to get to. Now, how this all transpired is someone sent me a picture of something in their grocery store. So I'm starting with this. And let's remember what the title is here. Buzzwords, deception, and other cheap tricks uh, that defy logic. So um, so the first thing I'm showing you is just uh, here's a pound of coffee you can get at most grocery stores. And uh, if you happen to be Canadian, then the top coffee here uh, you can get at your grocery store. Tim Hortons, ground coffee, Starbucks ground coffee. Everybody can see that okay? Everything's good, right? Everything makes sense. And then someone sent me a picture of this in the coffee aisle of their store. Ketogenic coffee, keto cafe. Oh, yeah, fair trade coffee. Organic, I want you to pay attention to what you're reading here, folks. Organic grass fed butter, medium chain triglycerides, Himalayan salt, all the right buzzwords. Energy, metabolism, brain power. See those words down there? So, this is a special coffee for sale, obviously, because obviously, it's ketogenic coffee. Well, let's uh, examine. Um, High performance instant coffee, coffee beverage. Ooh, high performance instant coffee beverage. And it's ketogenic coffee. Well, let's examine that a little bit. First of all, let me look at this word right here. Organic grass fed butter. I don't know about you, but I've never seen butter out in the uh, fields eating grass. Um, I didn't know butter could consume grass. So that's pretty interesting. Organic grass fed butter. How does that work? How do you feed butter, grass or anything else? Um, medium chain triglycerides, but here are the energy, the metabolism, and the brain power. Let's stop the nonsense. What do I mean by that? Here's something people aren't even letting penetrate your brain. There is no such thing as ketogenic foods. Okay, there is a physiological metabolic state called ketosis, and you can follow a ketogenic diet to get there, but there's no such thing as, as ketogenic foodstuffs. There is no such thing as ketogenic coffee, all right? Um, just because you add crap to it doesn't make it true. Ketosis is a physiological metabolic state and you can ha follow a ketogenic diet to get there. Yes, there are no carb, very low carb foods that can lead to a, a state of ketosis, hence a ketogenic diet, but that's a very different thing than calling something ketogenic coffee. That's utter nonsense. There are no ketogenic foods, only foods that contribute to the state of ketosis and a diet strategy that does that. And that comes from an overall diet strategy context and approach. Why that isn't challenged and that nonsense sits on the grocery shelf is a head scratcher to me as someone who's been studying nutrition uh, most of my life. So this is nonsense. And I'm going to explain to you why. So, for instance, I eat um, three days a week. I, I eat for dinner um, albacore, tuna packed in water and drained. The other three days a week for my protein at dinner, I eat uh, skinless, boneless uh, chicken breast. Well, both of those have no carbs in them. So I guess they're ketogenic. They're, they're ketogenic tuna and ketogenic chicken. Um, so that, that, uh, yeah, I think that must be it. So let's use a little word twisting to make a million dollars here. Example, let's stick with our coffee example. What do we know about caffeine? We know that caffeine works as a fat burner on two different fronts. 
One, caffeine mobilizes more free fatty acids for use during activity. That in and of itself spares glycogen. And it has the hormonal adrenal effects of caffeine, of course, to allow us to work um, longer and harder during physical activity, resulting in more fat loss from the glycogen sparing effect, but also, of course, um, from the adrenal effect uh, that it al keeps us alert, wakes us up, things like that. So these two functions of caffeine, I'm not going to post studies on them because they're well documented and they're not in dispute. We know these things about caffeine. All these lead to the energy metabolism brain power claims on the ketogenic coffee label, whether it had that nonsense in it or not. So here we go. I'm going back to this. Now watch my cursor. See the keto coffee energy, metabolism, brain power. Well, if we know the function of caffeine, then we know it has a metabolic effect of fat burning. We know it increases alertness and we know it gives us energy. So there is nothing special about that coffee that isn't in any other coffee other than putting it on there and attaching it to the, to the word keto, which makes absolutely no sense at all. So um, again, why aren't we questioning this stuff? And I'm just taking a brief pause. Uh, I see Perry's here and Perry, uh, happy birthday. So um and what Perry's saying here, folks, it, the reason it's on the shelves is because it sells. Of course it sells. I've seen this nonsense since the 70s. I've just been um, educated and academically to question everything and look for the root. And I can't believe that the same stuff that worked in the 70s still works today. Ketogenic coffee. What a load of crap. And it's what I'm telling you. People love to buy an identity. I'm a keto person. I'm a paleo person. So I have to buy my ketogenic coffee because it's got an energy metabolism and brain power and it's high performance cafe. It's a bunch of nonsense in a, in a, in a, in a friggin' bag is what it is. So Starbucks and Tim Hortons could just as easily add this to their coffee label. See what I added here from the first one? Here's a Starbucks blend, fat burning blend, special fat burning blend right there on the label. And they use the same research about caffeine to make the exact same claim and they wouldn't be lying. But let's not leave Tim Hortons out. How about Tim Hortons? So what I added right here on the Tim Hortons ground coffee, fat burning blend, special fat burning blend from Tim Hortons. These two companies could just as easily ride the research, which is the term I explained to you in the last webinar, and make the exact same claims as the energy metabolism and brain power claim in the keto cafe nonsense that uh, we started out with the, um, the special about the keto coffee in that regard. So um, very, very absolutely ridiculous. But why should I let the big companies cash in on this? You know, um, maybe I just to toss my ethics out the window. Why let them make all, all the money? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you. Scott Abel's coffee blend, fat burning coffee blend. And again, as long as I have a caffeine yield in that coffee, I could make the same energy, metabolism, brain power claims that's on that keto bag of nonsense that I saw. Except what I wouldn't say is that uh, somehow I have organically got grass fed butter. How do you grass feed butter or anything? How do you feed butter? Butter doesn't eat. Ugh, I can't believe this stuff is, goes unchallenged. But it just does to show you out there. So very, very important. Um, so hopefully, um, yes, let's get my uh, fat burning blend coffee out on Amazon and make it available to households everywhere. We'll I'll call it the able body blend. All right. But let's take this nonsense to the next level. Like I said earlier, I eat egg whites every morning, six days a week. Pure egg whites. Well, there's no carbs in egg whites. So I guess we can... Boom, ketogenic egg whites. I'll just add this little label right here if you see my mouse. So according to the ketogenic coffee logic, there must be ketogenic foods. It's not a, just a physiological state. So now I can add ketogenic egg white blends. And of course, this is fictitious labeling on my behalf, on my behalf to, to make a point. But I'm going to go through this and through this because every time I post something that points out the nonsense of keto, on my social media pages, the keto tribe tries to hijack my threads with the biggest load of nonsense and uninformed stuff I've ever heard, but that's okay. Um, and Mike Veith is just saying, yeah, $39.99 for, for a pound of my special coffee. <laughs> yep. So boom, 
All right. So for that matter, what about ketogenic whole eggs? As you see, as I open the carton here. So again, no carbs and whole eggs. Why not call them ketogenic whole eggs? Uh, in fact, let's create a whole section in the grocery aisle of uh, ketogenic. Why not? Uh, hey, ketogenic cabbage. Let's make it locally grown and organic too, like our like our keto coffee blend. Let's make it organically grown. Hey, how about um, ketogenic celery sticks at the movie theater? I mean, let, why stop? You know, let's just um, carry this nonsense forward. Very, very important. So, but why stop there? I can have a keto diet water. As a matter of fact, this kind of stuff exists. Or better yet, to line my own pockets, why not Scott Abel special keto diet water? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, if I did something like just add some apple cider vinegar to the water, then I could even call my special water ketogenic fat burning water or my ketogenic uh, alkalizing water. Um, so why not? Vitamin water uh, made one celebrity $300 million dollars. All right. So imagine if I added the buzzword fat burning to my water. That's all that that ketogenic coffee label was doing was writing the research and leading people right where they want to go to buy their diet identity. So very, very uh, important. And yes, of course, like I showed last week, uh, what I want to do here is just talk about the labels, deception, buzzwords and cheap tricks, not the rock band. Um, that we can put on labels. So of course, on the back of the label where I have ingredients, then I can say special uh, water ingredients, hyper filtered apple cider vinegar, and then of course, gluten-free, fat-free, carb-free, sodium-free, blah, 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 blah. And so it goes, but let's go to part two now. So I must be talking really fast. I'm going through this a lot faster than I thought I would, but that's a little carryover from some Facebook nonsense yesterday that was going on on my page that actually had nothing to do with me. So, um, you know, that's one thing I won't tolerate on my, on my page is, uh, a lot of the disrespect that goes on on social media. Won't have it, can't have it. It's not about whether you agree with me or not. Just don't do it. So anyway, so let's go to part two, more diet industry nonsense. Okay, so here's some Atkins bars. Okay, now let's notice um, if carbs are so bad, then why do we name meal replacement bars caramel double chocolate crunch bar? Mudslide bar, nutty fudge brownie, peanut caramel cluster bar. If these are the people that say sugar is madness, then why do you entice the sugar centers of the of their brain toward hyper palatable foods? Why? Because you can sell people nonsense back to them. You can tell them over here carbs are really bad, especially sugar. But then you tell them over here. But we have all this indulgence for you, which is everything you like. So that is really, really, really important and uh, getting some good comments here. So this is the trickery. Cater to the hyper palatable food centers of the brain while telling people the exact opposite in terms of health and nutrition. Really? Why aren't people questioning this nonsense? Why aren't people calling these people out? Really, a peanut caramel cluster bar, that's somehow healthy? That's somehow a diet food that's going to take you where you want to go? Stop the effing nonsense. So here's a Atkins bar, an advantage bar, of course. And it just happens to be called uh, chocolate decadence. Well, let's look at the uh, ingredients. Now, chocolate flavored coating, polydextrose, palm palm kernel and palm oil, uh, cocoa powder processed with, keyword there, processed, soy lecithin, a binder, artificial flavor, who knows what's in that, sucralose. Um, and then you've got another sweetener, peanut butter, flavored layer, malitol, a diuretic, palm kernel, more palm oil, partially defatted peanut flour, non-fat dry milk whey powder, salt, soy lecithin, anhydrous milk, Coconut powder, processed again. Glycerin, another binder. Protein blend, okay, whey protein, that's okay. A hydrolyzed gelatin, polydextrose. Um, okay, all these things you're going to find, of course, growing in nature. Of course, all these things are way better than fruits and vegetables, right? That's why you're eating this stuff, because it's carb-free. Um, soy lecithin, clarified butter, uh, palm kernel oil, artificial flavors again, cellulose, more soy lecithin, guar gum which is a binder, and then a vitamin mix. And we all know that exogenous vitamins taken from outside the body aren't nearly as well absorbed. Um, 
and then uh, more and more sodium, uh, salente, uh, phyllooquinin, vitamin K, blah, 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 blah. But here we go with more chemical soup. And as Michael Pollan said, outside of the produce aisles, if foods have to have packaging, then look for packaging with four ingredients or less and with uh, the less um, multiple uh, syllabic words. Does that sound like a diet food to you folks? This is just chemical soup. Even when I advocate rice cakes to people say, oh no, like you can't eat rice cakes, the glycemic is so high. But digestibility is easy, it's simple, it's easy on the stomach. And with rice cakes, look at the ingredients. The ones I buy just say brown rice and water, that's it, and some salt sometimes. So this stuff, this nonsense is just chemical soup. But there's something else here I want you to look at in this label. Take a look right here. Let's look at the serving size, folks, 60 grams. No wonder they can claim low carb, low sugar, because I can inhale 60 grams of dust if I, deep, if I take a deep enough breath. So here the portion size, there's 30 grams in an ounce. This is two ounces. It's supposed to replace a meal or get you through your next meal. But it's proven in the research over and over again when you're hungry that small amount of food like that, a small amount of bolus like that is going to induce, not reduce hunger because you're only getting two ounces of food. So you can honeymoon on that for a while and say, oh, that really curbed my hunger. Oh, that's a that's a craving. That's a craving crusher. That was awesome. Good enough. And just wait till the anti-catabolic phase and the honeymoon phase of that is over. And watch what happens to 60 gram amount of food. It's going to induce, not reduce hunger. So again, we have to start questioning the nonsense. So let's talk cheap tricks. Cheap tricks, sorry. I'm getting too excited for my own self. So how do you tell people, eat all your favorite foods, which is the common quote of Nutrisystem, Weight Watchers, etc. Create a menu that only nurtures greater desire for hyperpalatable foods, right? Salt, sugar, uh, and fat with um, high level bliss points. But then you call it a diet system. And then they co-opt and they corrupt the word boost metabolism. And yet, let's take a look at all this. Let's look at all this close up. I'm, I can't wait to get to your comments, folks. Boy, you guys are on board. Good comments, good comments. So let's talk cheap tricks, all right? Nutrisystem, part of your diet, carrot cake. Part of your diet, chocolate cake. Part of your diet, red velvet, whoopie pie. I got a red velvet whoopie pie for you. Tiramisu, so desserts. Now let's go from... Uh, Desserts to Italian and sausage and turkey pizza. All right. So thick crust pizza, meatballs and marinara sauce. Oh, yes, my favorite, the sweet and tangy flavored meat stick. If you buy this, I got a sweet and tangy flavored meat stick for you. Oh, my God, this stuff upsets me. Meatloaf sandwich. So what do we see here, folks? What we see here, stop the effing nonsense. Basically, all the known indulgent foods with emphasized bliss points of sugar, fat, and salt, the foods that we know, we all know, lead people to be overweight to begin with, well, somehow on our magic system, you can eat all these foods and lose all the excess weight that you want and, and still have craving crusher shakes and, and replacement bars that are called chocolate decadence. How does any of that make sense in terms of real world application? You can't have the same line of thinking that caused a problem and expect a different result than the problem perpetuating itself. So unbelievable. And if you're going to continue to buy into that, the keto followers that are going to attack this thread here, I got a keto for you. I got a sweet and tangy meat flavored meat stick for you. I just can't believe when I break this stuff down that other people aren't seeing it and other people aren't talking about it. But wait, there's more. Let's use some of their hype uh, buzzwords against them. Look at this, the turbo shake, okay? Plus probiotics to support digestive health and help bust belly bloat. Well, folks, if you paid attention to my stuff, you know that probiotics has already been debunked. It's just another buzzword to put on a label to get people who want to buy their identity of thinking healthy. I'm healthy because I bought this. It's got probiotics. And again, we're going to talk health and digestion and belly bloat, but we're gonna do it within the context of a chocolate shake, okay? And we're gonna make health claims about that chocolate cake. 
All that that does is enhance your own wish bias and lead people into the same struggle battle mentality against foods they shouldn't be eating. It makes absolutely no sense uh, at all. Now, here's the ingredients to that little um, piece of frankenfood. We got resistant maltodextrin. They love to use the term resistant and net carbs and other made up words. Uh, again, processed with Elk, elk, I can't can pronounce these um, chemical words, but processed. Soy lef, lecithin, another binding and, and processing agent. Guar gum, xanthan gum, uh, sunflower oil, cornstarch, cocoa extract, salt, maltodextrin, uh, monk fruit extract, which is sweet in there, carrageenan, modified cornstarch, okay, sodium caseinate, that one's not too bad, okay, and then mono and diglycerides, so more sugars, and on top of the mono and diglycerides, which is a way of saying sugar, well, we have more sugar, all right, and then we have um, gum arabic, and then down through, these are all vitamins, and then uh, we it contains milk and soy, so all we have here, folks, is a collection of chemical soup, and then if, but that's on the back, on the front, of course, we can make all kinds of health claims, plus probiotics to support digestive health, deliberately using the word health and help bust uh, body bloat. So they use the term probiotic down here too and protein and fiber. But again, they don't tell you that research shows that any exogenous forms of things that aren't uh, endogenous uh, tend not to be absorbed or assimilated nearly as well, if at all. So um, something to consider. So let's, again, stop the effing nonsense. Let's stop with endless creating of frankenfoods and calling them healthy and nutritious, all right? Or worst of all, calling them diet foods on the way to lean and healthy. So shame on these people. I'm going to come out with my fat-burning water and my fat-burning coffee and whatever else I can think of, and I'm going to start uh, advertising grass-fed butter because that one just cracks me up. I've got visions of someone at a petting zoo holding out grain for sticks of butter to eat. Anyway, the truth is, folks, uh, eat food, not a lot, mostly plants. Where have we heard that before? Well, it's in several of my books. So we can look at the pizza and the carrot cake, and let's just let me uh, go through these again. So the carrot cake, the chocolate cake, the whoopie pie, tiramisu, and then, of course, different kinds of pizzas, meatballs, meat sticks and meatloaf. And then of course your bars and shakes on top of that. And of course, all of that Franken food, you see the ingredients. Now let's just get real about that. The truth, eat food, not a lot, mostly plants. Here's the thing, here's my meal too. So my meal too is 40 grams of uh, unsalted, roasted unsalted almonds. And then as much fruit as I want, that particular day was five clementines, a large apple, and the biggest banana I could find. Um, that replaces my sweet and tangy meat stick, I guess. None of these foods have more than one ingredient, right? Each is a food unto itself. Nuts, apple, clementines, banana. No need for a label, all right? No need to tell you what's in it because we know. And if fruit is so bad, then why am I not fat? Because this is a substantial food bolus going into my stomach every single day, six days a week. And I can tell you this, let me skip up here again, just real, real quick, bear with me folks, I gotta skip up here just one more time. 60 grams, remember this, 60 grams, all right, in a meal replacement bar, 60 grams, that's two ounces of food, two ounces of food versus that's a hell of a lot more than 60 grams, folks, since my, my uh, almonds right here are 40 grams by themselves. So add in the banana, add in five clementines, add in a whole apple. I can tell you that's a hell of a lot more than 60 grams, and that's what's going to satiate hunger and not induce it. And that's what meals should be doing is satiating hunger, not playing with it, not inducing it, and not creating um, chemical nonsense. So very, 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 very important. Um, now here, uh, since Andy's on board, this is one of Andy's diet meals since we're both on the cycle diet. Rice, black beans, chickpeas with a little tomato pasta sauce, so just plain. Uh, none come with other ingredients, no fillers, additives, blah, blah, blah. 
very, very important. Um, none come with other ingredients, just healthy whole foods. You've seen Andy, abs by Andy, fitness model, cover model, blah, 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 healthy whole foods. We're not living on Atkins bars. We're not li living on, on bars and shakes, and we're not trying to combat belly bloat, and we're not uh, drinking ketogenic coffee, whatever the hell that term even means. And claims to boost metabolism from all these chemical soup recipes are just nonsense. This is more of the buzzwords, co-opting common sense is what I call it. Um, here, I'll just put that for you um, right there. I wrote that down. So as we started, this is just more co-opting common sense when these Nutrisystem and these other start using, throwing around the terms metabolism. First, they were going to rev your metabolism. Then they're going to boost your metabolism. But really, you can only optimize a metabolism, and you can only do that from where it's at. And what optimizes metabolism is a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet in a relative uh, deficit with regular activity. For instance, the original research on the healthiest diets on the planet from the healthiest people on the planet, the Okinawa diet. What did we know about the Okinawa diet? What did we learn in research from the Okinawa diet? They ate in a relative deficit, which not an absolute deficit, not a keto state, which is a state of starvation. Now, keto nonsense uh, followers would like to tell you that keto is a starvation diet without the starvation. That's just nonsense. The state of ketosis is a state of starvation. You can't divide that in half. All right. You can't have your own facts on the matter. But what do we know on the Okinawa diet? They ate in relative deficits, and guess what their carb levels were at, folks? 70 to 80 percent, and 70 to 80 percent of their diet is also plant-based, plant-based diet, and it started there, and then we studied cultures around the world, and we see the same thing over and over again. And as Michael Pollan liked to call it, the silence of the yams. What does he mean by that? Well, if you're old fart like me, that's a play on the movie, The Silence of the Lambs. But the silence of the yams means real food. When he says eat food, not a lot, mostly plants, uh, real food doesn't have a label on it. So if you want to optimize metabolism, you eat real food. The cycle diet is based in a carb plant-based diet on diet days with well-timed refeeds. So very, very important. Now here's more of the keto guru nonsense. It's going to bring them out in droves on my Facebook page and on my YouTube page. Um, I'll have more to say about that in a second. It drives me insane. Um, but um, people love to hear good news about their bad habits. So a diet that says constant bacon consumption is good for you is music to the ears of idiots. So just like when Atkins' original book claimed that fried pork rinds was healthier than fresh fruit, there's people willing to buy into that. So we also know the insulogenic index of food shows that beef and other red meat to be as insulogenic as white carbs. So if carbs are the problem because of insulin and the carb connection, which has been debunked, and keto gurus have no answer for this, what about the insulogenic effect of red meat? And we also know red meat has the highest inflammation markers. We also know um, the highest intakes of red meat also have the highest um, correlate highly with the most disease states. These things are not in dispute as much as keto people would like you to believe that they are or they were. But that's just the way it goes. So who are the truth sayers? Between T. Colin Campbell, Dr. Michael Greger, and Dr. John McDougall, there's well over 100, 120 years of researchers doing nothing but research, seeking observable truth over profit margins. And the conclusions, Dr. Michael Greger, ketosis is a state of illness. And Dr. John McDougall, the marketing of such is dangerous and dishonest. So here's what we have here. And then, of course, let the fights begin. One of the things that I think um, I have the biggest trouble with, and I don't know how these gentlemen do it, is I miss the world of academia. When I was doing my master's degree, pursuing my graduate degree, what I came to love and respect and engage with was that everybody in the room was on equal footing of me. When I look at the comments directed 
at these people on YouTube and other places where their work is. I can't believe the level of idiocy out there from the uninformed um, and the ignorant attacking these people who have done nothing but devote their lives to research of the truth. And the truth just happens to be that a plant-based diet is the secret to longevity, the secret to good life, the secret to putting life in your years, the secret to adding years to your life. It's indisputable if you actually look at the research. Now, I'm going to, this is um, this uh, YouTube quote right here. So I want to let you know that the pictures I'm about to use are actually from this YouTube um, right here, this YouTube link. So I'm just going to put that on there for you guys to see because this the this stuff isn't isn't mine and I don't want to claim that it is imagine that someone not taking credit for someone else's work so here's I found this one uh that I that I like I would like to run it um but if I run it I'll have to shut down my word document and I don't want to do that so that's the YouTube clip but it's just near the end anyway now, I don't know how many of you have been on board with my lecture series, Low Carb Lies and the Politics for Profits. Well, this is what it's about. And if a picture is worth a thousand words and you really should go to the end of this YouTube clip. And like I said, it's you don't even have to watch the whole YouTube clip. It's basically an interview. But at the seven minute and 23 second mark on, you're going to see something here. But first, before I show that to you and a picture being worth a thousand words among consumers, diet is religion and diet as religion. So basically all I can really do folks is preach to the choir because every time I do something anti-keto, even with the research, the, the tribal effects, the religious element, the belief system that comes into play. And I watch these guys who have devoted their lives to pure research get attacked by the misinformed and the ill-informed and the people who um, you know, are just easy to convince of nonsense when the research is stark. Even yesterday, someone told me I need to do my research. Are you kidding me? So I'm supposed to to placate someone who's maybe read one book and believes in that book like it's a Bible. I'm supposed to do every single webinar by placating this person by posting a hundred references for every time I do a webinar. I've written over a dozen books. My research is in those books. So um, when people tell me that, it really shows how ignorant they actually are. And it shows how diet is religion for most people and that you're never going to penetrate. You know, what, what people don't understand is that I've seen this play. I've seen this movie. I've seen this redone. So I've seen this since the 70s. People think keto is something new. This is just Atkins in graduate clothing. This is just Atkins going to the prom. This is just Atkins out of the ghetto. It's nothing new. So people want to believe it's new. So um, very, very important. And we know that a high plant-based, starch-based diet reverses many of the common diseases of affluence, what we call affluenza. Very, very important. I'm going to get to your comments in a, in a second. But from this YouTube clip, Here's low carb versus plant based. And this, watch this, folks. Pay attention to this, please. All right, I'm going to expand this. It, it looks better on the YouTube clip because I had to, uh, I had to take um, screenshots, which kind of shrunk the screen. But here is Lauren Corden, Lauren Corden the Paleo Pusher uh, Paleo Diet book, which was debunked over and over again now. But when it first came out, well, guess what? He's overweight. The person that published this YouTube was a little less kind about it. He used the word fat. So here's a low carb guy, overweight. Here's someone pushing his a low fat vegan. Guess what? He's lean. And how about Sally Fallon who promotes meat? Guess what? She's overweight. And how about Pam Popper, PhD, another low-fat vegan? Low-fat meaning high carbs. And guess what? She's lean. How about this guy who wrote, uh, you know, the who wrote the the wheat book? Uh, William Davis, low-carb guru. Guess what? Overweight. And then Joel Furman promotes plant foods. Guess what? He's lean. And how about Barry Sears with the Zone Diet, which ends up being lower in carbs? Guess what? He's overweight. How about John McDougall, low-fat vegan? Guess what? He's lean. 
And then Robert Atkins, who pushed bacon, butter, and, and pork rinds. Um, and he was overweight, especially at the time of his death. Whether you want to believe he slipped on some ice and died, the fact is the stats in terms of what was revealed was he had heart disease and he was 260 pounds. So that was not in dispute. What about Caldwell Esselstyn? Low fat vegan. Look how lean these gentlemen are. But not just that. Look at the life in their years. Look at the life in their years, folks. They're lean and they're healthy. So guess what? Boom. Neil Bernard, guess what? He's still lean. All right. Excellent. Guess what? She's still fat. All right, let's say overweight. I'm not trying to be hurtful here. Uh, guess what? She's still lean. Guess what? Wheat belly. Well, guess what? He's still overweight. Guess what? Joel Furman, he's still lean. These are plant-based diets, starch-based diets. Guess what? I spoke once uh, at a symposium with Barry Sears. Nice guy, but just not on the money. And guess what? The starch solution, John McDougall. Look how lean and healthy. And these are older people. If you're older than me, folks, you're old. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're old. So look how lean, look how healthy. And Atkins died 60 pounds overweight with heart disease. Let's start saying a picture is worth a thousand words. Look at Dr. Esselstyn, still lean. Look at that. Look how buff, trim, lean, vibrant he looks for his age. Boom. So if these guys follow their own diets, and again, this is from that other YouTube clip. This isn't mine. Their pictures speak a thousand words. I couldn't have said it better myself. People still getting rich selling diet books are fair game to call them out for being overweight if they're supposed to follow and it's supposed to be so easy and supposed to be so natural for our bodies to follow this nonsense. Then why isn't the pictures, why aren't these pictures reversed? I don't get it. I don't get why other people don't get it. And remember, I told you the first when I first started the webinars and I wasn't doing PowerPoints and I wasn't presenting my research because I was just learning how to go live. I had what six part series on low carb lies and the politics for profit all about writing books. But let's look at this relevant point, shall we? Imagine if I touted my cycle diet book online and my online course using myself and Andy as I do, and both of us were overweight. And it was just me with talking points, yak, 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 and cherry-picked research, but Andy and I both looked like we swallowed a pumpkin. Really, we both had chubby mm -hmm. cheeks and, and ruddishness in our face. Really, would that? how is that going to sell a lifestyle? And yet, if you read it in a book, you can get thousands and thousands of followers who buy into short-term nonsense. I'm telling you, you people out there who are going to come in and tell me you've lost 60 and 70 pounds on keto, I bet it's within the first year or so, and I feel sorry for you in the upcoming years. As I said two webinars ago, I showed the research that says follow-up on diet programs need to go up to four years and watch what happens if you study these people for four years. So for the record, Andy and I, cycle dieters, guess what we do? Boom, we eat carbs and we are starchivores. So get that through your noggins. I'm not going to apologize for it. I don't know how these academics online, the wonderful, wonderful writers and presenters and academics that I just presented, I don't know how they deal with it. Uh, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, after his book, The China Study, the way he was attacked um, and vilified. Um, and, and not even in proper ways that had anything to do with research. So folks, if, imagine Andy and I, both 40 pounds overweight, talking about the benefits of the cycle diet, and we were both big fat fatties, right? And we both wrote a book and then hid behind that with a book jacket that only showed our face and then hid behind that when we made our millions and then didn't care if pictures of us got out. No, we got a little bit of integrity here on the cycle diet lifestyle. We eat carbs. We are starchivores, but how do these other authors get away with this? And that's the nonsense. So really, really pisses me off. And when I read the comments, like I said, I got, the, I got those uh, clips from the book title from that YouTube clip that I posted there, which isn't mine. Um, but I was in and around some other YouTube posts from some very smart cookies in terms of plant-based diet. And I can't believe 
the nonsense that they have to endure from the uninformed and the ignorant. It's unbelievable to me, and I miss the academic world where everyone who sat in an audience uh, had earned their way there by being on equal footing of research. So, um, so chronic dieters often have underlying food and eating issues. All these people that are glorifying keto, yeah, they're not telling you about the constant constipation and other things they're dealing with, but they're gonna end up with egg on their face, pun intended, in a couple of years when the real stuff happens. So what I want you to, if you haven't already in terms of um, my stuff, if you haven't taken the food questionnaire yet, you can do that at scottablefitness.com slash food questions. Uh, and that should give you um, some stuff uh, to think about and to go on. So I'm going to bury that down here for now and get to your uh, fantastic comments. Sorry that I delayed them, folks, but I really wanted to be on a roll, a whole wheat roll, um, 100% whole wheat roll, uh, because I want a wheat belly. Um, but I really wanted to uh, get that out there. So Perry's just posted that for me since it didn't come. So you can copy that right there, folks, scottablefitness.com slash food questions. It's just free content, uh, part of my book, Beyond Metabolism, that you see behind me here. Um, Ashley's just saying, start your wars, unite. Yeah, it, it, what's amazing to me is the voices seem to be louder for the nonsense. The people who get it, the people who are plant-based, they're very calm in their presentation, and I wish they'd get more animated. I wish they'd be as animated as and ignorant as the keto people seem to be. Because um, the level of ignorance, and maybe it's just social media where everyone's brave behind a computer screen. But like I said, I miss the mutual respect of the academic world when I was part of it. Um, I, I felt joy in having earned my way there by doing keeping up with the research on whoever was speaking. Um, and we don't have that in social media. Any idiot can weigh in with their story. Uh, and that's most unfortunate because it clouds and muddies the water. But if you can't listen to the research being presented by the people that I mentioned and take it to heart, then, then you, again, you're following diet as religion. You've already chosen your religion and you already have your Bible. So I'm not going to start anymore trying to... Uh, you know, preach to the unwashed and preach to the atheist. There's no point. So if people want to be keto nonsense, let them be keto nonsense. I've presented enough research for the last a lifetime. Lydia says, I love this. Thank you, Lydia. It's not, uh, nice for you to be here. And then um, Perry, I don't know what you were referring to. Sorry, I waited too long. So Ashley's just saying, McDougal helped me reverse my gut dysbiosis through a whole food plant-based diet. Well, there's a shock. Um, keto people will have something to say about that, I'm sure. Uh, the nonsense that I see from keto people, like I said, in social media is absolutely ridiculous. So, um, and Perry dug this up for us as well. Uh, Perry's my editor for people who don't know. Um, eat lots of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. This is from uh, cancer and the latest diets include lots of vegetables, fruits, and whole grains have been linked to decreased risk of colon cancer. Um, eat less red meat and processed meats, I mean, a no-brainer. And then, of course, um, I, I couldn't catch the study. I tried to grab it, but I couldn't grab it. But there's also now a study, a, a link between people who eat the most oatmeal and weight control and being lean. And, of course, I eat oat, oatmeal or oat bran six days a week. So uh, very, very important. Um, Perry's just saying he wasn't fat to begin with, but he lost two inches off his waist following the cycle diet. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, Ange is just saying the cycle diets about living in the real world. Um, yep. Uh, then we got here. And Michael, Mike, my client, Mike, who's done fantastic with weight loss. Um, how much have you lost, Mike? I'd like to post that up there if you want to make a post. But Mike's saying, so glad tomorrow is his refeed um, after showing him all that cake. Yeah, that's what I, you know, people might say, oh, well, your cycle diet is about highly indulgent food. Yeah, but it's not about making it part of the diet day. It's not saying you can eat this all the time whenever you want and it's lean and healthy. Like that's just crap. So um, very, very important. Um, and then people are posting articles. Mike's just posting uh, this article as well. You can see that. So um, yeah, sorry about the, for those who are easily offended. 
sorry about the sweet and tangy meat stick comment, folk, but I, I, I can't resist when, you know, again, social media sometimes uh, tests your tolerance and arguing with idiots and mediating among morons is not my forte. I value, value my time far too much uh, to be doing any of that. Um, so I try not to engage with that. Um, so, um, so Joshua, I'm glad that I'm glad that could entertain you. Um, and then Andy's I'm glad to see you on board, brother. Now, net carbs, of course, is the biggest uh, marketing angle. Um, fi minus fiber, sugar, alcohols, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, <laughs> and then modern snake oil salesman. Yep. Uh, yep. Well, what's Tony saying? Uh, Yeah, and there's there's truth here, Tony. Tony's making a good point. Um, you know, people that want uh, a meatless burger, uh, you know, watch out for all the ingredients that are in it. That's not necessarily being, you know, and I'm not telling people, don't get me wrong here, folks. The researchers that I mentioned and that are vegan and lean, I'm not suddenly saying vegan, but I am saying plant-based. And I am saying a majority plant-based. And let's stop with the nonsense of macros. Well, how does that affect my macros? Well, like I told you, the Okinawans eat 70 to 80% of their diet from carbs. Forget about it. Boy, this fitness industry, let's overcomplicate everything. Hopefully you guys saw uh, the Fitbit clip that I posted this morning about all the overcomplication nonsense and being a slave to the machine. Uh, no thanks. I'd like to think for myself. Um, Joshua was just saying, I had a client tell me she takes pills that keeps carbs from converting to fat. Wow. Wow. You should tell her you got some swampland for her in uh, Florida to sell her, Joshua, or just tell her you know of a sweet and tangy meat stick you can sell her. Wow. And then Jared's just saying, yeah, this stuff's everywhere, right? Red vines are fat free and sodium free. And, 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 and of course with the Atkins bars, yeah, those carbs are okay. Those kind of cars, carbs, those ones are all right. Um, so very, very important. Uh, Laura Lee posting someone, uh, her daughter's shampoo is advertised as gluten-free because somehow that's going to penetrate your scalp and get into your system and make you sick. So, um, yeah, that's very, very uh, ridiculous. Um, so, folks, look out for my... Um, um, look out for my upcoming fat, fat burning coffee and my fat burning water and, uh, you know, my fat burning, uh, keto egg whites and my keto eggs and my keto chicken breasts. And, uh, uh, the, the best one I like is uh, the coffee the, with the, with the, I don't even know how a grocery shelf could shelf a label that says, uh, grass fed butter. I, I still, I'm, I'm still picturing a butter with a mouth eating grass. I mean, it just like, I just, I love that. I mean, and it, and yet it's on, it's on store shelves. So uh, how, how ridiculous. Ashley's just saying, oh, thank you, Ashley. Appreciate that. I posted it before I read it. I wasn't trying to be self-indulgent there, but uh, very important. Uh, Elaine is just saying oatmeal with, well, oatmeal with part of your breakfast. Some people oatmeal, eat oatmeal by themselves. I eat oatmeal with egg whites from the old bodybuilding days. I do that six days a week. Um, and here's the other thing, folks, before everybody goes. Okay, let's celebrate the people. I have JP on a couple of weeks ago. My client lost 100 pounds. And if Michael posts how much he's lost, I think it's well over 100 pounds as well. Um, and that's great. And we should applaud those people. But what about the people like Andy and myself who never had to lose weight to begin with? because of a diet lifestyle that makes sense. Why not applaud that? Why not to look to people who have been successful in not ever gaining weight to begin with because of a diet strategy and a fitness regimen? Boom, how about that? How about calling that into play? So we need to start doing more of that. And then um, Ferris is just saying CrossFit preaches against starts. That's because CrossFit and paleo are in this uh, marriage with each other. Um, I'm sure that divorce is coming if it hasn't already. Um, very, very important. Um, and then Perry's just got more research for us. Um, but again, folks. Oh, there we go. Mike. Thanks, Mike, for posting that. So before we go, folks, another client of mine 
Mike Veith on the cycle diet, as you heard him, uh, well, you didn't hear him, but as he posted, uh, tomorrow's his refeed day and uh, all those pictures of cakes and stuff he's looking for. Look at that, folks. He lost 120 pounds, about 120 pounds. So that, for me, is boom. Because he's kept it off and he doesn't live like he's inside some kind of prison and he doesn't treat foodstuffs as enemy or good or bad. He's on the cycle diet. Um, like a lot of my people living the diet lifestyle. How about that? 120 pounds. And guess what? He's a star travor. That can't be right. He eats carbs. That can't, well, that can't be right. Abel's up to something. It's got to be drugs. Yeah, it's got to be drugs. That's what it is. They sign up for me with coaching folks and I pretend to send diets and programs, but their drugs are in the mail. Yeah, that's what it is. As someone tried to accuse me of yesterday. So, boom. And then you're getting a lot of uh, congrats there, Mike, as you should. So that's the way to go, folks. A plant-based diet. What do you think, Perry? We get Mike on the show. Uh, if I can convince Mike, uh, I don't know if he's ready for something like that. So um, very, very important, folks. But let's stop the nonsense, shall we? Let's get uh, to where we want to go, where we need to go. Uh, let's do it right. Let's start honoring our bodies. So, you know, this has been more fitness and diet industry nonsense that's right in our faces and nobody says anything and nobody does anything. And then the tribal elements of diet religion come forward and talk nonsense and talk smack on social media without having the facts. And it's funny when people tell me to do my research when I've written as many books as I have and they expect that every webinar I do, I'm going to post a hundred pieces of research. It's just not realistic. So this one was about buzzwords. We saw on the ketogenic coffee, you know, everything, Himalayan salt and or, organic, organic and grass fed butter and medium chain triglycerides. Every buzzword you could throw on that label was on there. So hopefully uh, you guys, um, and then when it got to the bars, and the shakes and the meals, you know, meatballs and tangy meat sticks and pizza and tiramisu. Uh, this is what I mean, cheap tricks that defy logic. Somehow all those things that make everybody fat, well, you come to us and eat all those same things and you're going to lose weight and be healthy. And the health claims and the metabolism claims that these people make is from the weight loss, not from the actual foods. They're not getting healthier. It's the weight loss that'll make anyone's blood pressure go down, et cetera. And that's just during the honeymoon period of portion control. So don't even take that the wrong way. When you're eating a 60 gram bar, like I said, that's going to induce, not reduce hunger. So very, very important stuff, folks. So again, back to co-opting common sense. That's what the diet and fitness industry love to do. They love to take what should be common sense, mix it up, shake it up, and then throw it on like it's dice and then uh, manipulate you to believe in nonsense. So, yeah, paleo cookies, gluten-free cookies. Uh, what else we got? We got Atkins bread. I'm sure there's keto bread. So don't eat any of that stuff, but let's entice you with its exact replication of faux food and franken food. Uh, and let's call that healthy. It makes no sense. What we need to do in diet industry, people need to do is convince people to look at food different in a diet psychology way to look at and think about thinking about food in a different way. Healthy whole foods like when I showed um, when I showed my um, my meal to there with all that fruit and uh, the nuts. So why why am I not fat? doesn't make any sense. So um, any more comments? I'm just looking and uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Well, I appreciate that, Elena. So, <laughs> some people still follow me uh, and follow me, uh, you know, um, loyally. And I appreciate that because there's uh, a lot of attack dogs out there when you're, again, like I said, folks, and I borrowed that from Dr. Michael Greger, people love to hear good news about their bad habits. So tell people they can eat bacon uh, on a regular basis and be healthy. And there's going to be people that want to lap that up like a dog. Um, so very, very um, unfortunate, but very true. So um, that's it, folks. So that's what I got for tonight. 
And hopefully you benefited from it. I hope you guys are hitting your share buttons because we really need to get this kind of stuff out there. Um, hit your share buttons, um, get all that out there. And, uh, you know, um, let's get more people on board with some healthy common sense living. Um, so this was more fitness and diet industry nonsense. Uh, let's stop the nonsense, as I said. And uh, let's look for things in our grocery store food shelves. If you want to send them to me, you're too afraid to post it on your own social media pages because of the tribal nature of social media. You're going to get attacked and you know it. Send them to me. I'm, you know, I got brave enough shoulders, hard enough shoulders. Plus, I don't give a rat's ass what these other people think. So uh, we'll get it out there. And, um, you know, but let's start looking. Let's start paying attention so we can have more people like, uh, like Mike you know, lose 120 pounds, but do it in a healthy way, keep it off, um, you know, and look at food differently. And these Nutrisystems and Weight Watchers, they're not helping you look at food differently. They're not helping you. They're still telling you eat meatballs and pizza and desserts. That's not helping you. And it's not going to take you any, any place healthy for the long term. So that's all I got for you tonight, folks. I hope you benefited from it. I can't see the emoticons, but uh, if you have them, uh, share them and throw them across the screen and Facebook likes that. And uh, so hopefully the Saturday night gig is going to work. That's what I do on Saturday nights because I'm just a boring guy who likes to stay home. Um, and, you know, hopefully if you see people in the attack dogs, don't be afraid to speak up, folks, because, you know, it's the old saying about, about you know, what allows evil to flourish is when good people say and do nothing. Well, what allows nonsense to flourish is when good people say and do nothing in this industry. So uh, stand up, be counted. Um, if there's a pay, price to pay for that, um, you know, we'll have your back and that's fine. So uh, anyway, folks, I'm going to end this. So I'm, I'm really ha happy you were out there. Hopefully some of you benefited from it. Um, and by all means, leave your comments, hit your share buttons, and I'll see you all next week.